It's not unusual for eco-projects to be taken up with gusto among pupils in primary schools, but it's less common for secondary schools. Ringmer College in East Sussex is the exception. The students here could hardly be more committed. They call themselves eco-reps, and of 800 students, a quarter are proud to wear the badge. That's 200 kids volunteering to help protect the planet and their own future. It's definitely become very much part of the school's ethos. Yeah, it's, and it's quite like a proud, prestigious thing to do at this school. On a normal day, uh, when you came to school, you'd probably go to your lesson, but if you saw any litter or anything, you'd pick it up and put it in the bin. If you think about it, it's, you know, we're sort of helping to sort of pave the way for our generations and sort of future generations. Everyone seems to have just really completely embraced it, and it's part of the school. When you have kids and they have kids, you know, you want them to have a good life. We've really got to think forward in the future, but like, it's not all about like today. Well, it doesn't really sound too, too nice, does it, picking up after other people, but, um, <laughs> but we do anyway, because we want to change the environment. This is very much a story of pupil power, but crucially, Ringma has a dedicated member of staff who spearheads environmental policy within the school. I'm Stephen Green, and I'm employed at Ringma Community College as an eco-coordinator. It became apparent to me when I came into education that the educationalists were not ahead of the game as far as environmental initiatives were concerned. And it became apparent that you could very, very straightforwardly make a real impression on things like waste reduction, on things like purchasing, on things like energy management. And that's really where we started from. The sky's the limit with Steve because I've got someone who's got an environmental background, he's not a teacher, so I've employed him to um, dedicate hours to actually for this topic specifically he can work with the students so now I've got over 200 students actively involved in this work. Yeah well if a um, eco rep finds out or notices that some kind of electrical appliance is left on in a teacher's classroom they get charged um, five pounds out of their um, budget so if they do it a number of times it can mount to a Quite a big amount. <laughs> yeah. What we've done here, rather craftily, I suppose, is that we've devolved power to the eco reps, um, and that they actually can now quite legitimately suggest to a teacher that they're not necessarily managing their classroom well. We are named and shamed as departments by the pupils on inset days for how much reprographics uh, materials we've used uh, and how much energy we've used. We are charged if we leave our projectors on. Uh, we really made to feel that we've got to pay attention to this. We don't just pay lip service to it, we actually put our money where our mouth is. I know at the beginning there was a resistance on this by some of the staff because they felt that it could well cause um, some aggravation between them and the pupils. I have to say that hasn't happened. It's not every secondary school that can demonstrate such visible and effective commitments on green energy. Well, we have the wind turbine that uses the wind and we have the solar panels that um, uses the sun and turns it into more energy for light bulbs and other things. And any spare energy that we have, we sell to the national grid for a bit of money. And um, if we need the energy back, then we buy the energy back off the national grid. Ringma didn't start with the advantage of modern energy efficient buildings. The main college building dates from the 1950s and still has its original heating system. They've devised a simple and effective way of saving energy and money. The caretaker, Graham Allen, manually adjusts the temperature of the boiler throughout the day and turns radiators on and off. It may not sound like anything special, but it's helped the school save £6,000 a year in gas bills, and it's something that all schools with similar systems could do. The pupils are even involved in the design of the school's new buildings. Never underestimate their ability to come up with ideas. And we've met with the architects from day one on the design of our buildings. And we were sitting around the table with one of the architects at a very early meeting of the design group. Um, and one of the young pupils pointed out that he th they thought it was rather silly having open, large open doors that would face southwesterly down the field, that we ran the risk of creating an enormous wind tunnel. At that stage, the architect quite openly admitted it was something he hadn't thought of, it hadn't something that crossed his mind, and as a result of that, we had our wind deflector wall that was included in, in the design. And, you know, I think that's a classic example of a child picking up on something which was um, been, been overlooked by a very highly paid professional. Ringmer is leading the way in pupil involvement. Can other secondary schools take a leaf out of their book? What we're trying to do at Ringmer is to take very small steps to making a big difference. 
too many people, whether it's in schools, in institutions, in public buildings, or even in large corporations, go through this um, belief that it's not my energy, it's not my paper, it's not my resource, why should I worry about it? Well, the answer is we all need to worry about it. And unless we pass that message on to our children, then it'll be a problem which they will not be able to overcome.